Okay, we're going to perform a series of uh, important tests here today to uh, test and check the integrity of this repeater. Uh, one of our customers just sent over to us to have uh, checked out. Uh, <clears throat> so what we have here is a back-to-back TP8100. It's a couple of uh, Tate TM8110s uh, with the Sinclair 6614 uh, duplexer. And what we're doing today is we're going to check uh, the integrity of the receiver, the transmitter, the duplexer. We're going to check for desensitization. We're going to check for power output. We're going to check for sensitivity. And uh, a mirage of other uh, tests as well. So this test here, this is the lead uh, coming directly from the transmitter. And the lead follows over here to the communications monitor. And what we're doing right now is we're just going to do a simple check uh, for raw power output from the transmitter. So while we're looking at this, I'm going to key, I'm going to key up the transmitter. And we're going to take a look at how much power the transmitter is actually putting out in raw power. And that's uh, 24 watts of power, raw power from the uh, transmitter, so 23.8 to be exact. We're on a battery right now. All right, so the transmitter's working properly. Okay, so next thing we'll do is we're going to test the uh, receiver. Okay, so in testing for the uh, receiver side, uh, what we've done is we've disconnected the receiver cable from the duplexer. We're running that uh, cable uh, through a piece of uh, dual shielded coax back over to the communications call monitor and what we're going to do is we're going to check for sensitivity raw sensitivity straight into the receiver so we're going to turn this value up until it reaches the breaking point where the audio starts to kick in and if you can see that that's actually 100 and make 120 dBm. So that receiver is kicking in at neg 120 dBm. Now it might be a little difficult to see uh, from the camera from the video, but we're at neg 124 right now, neg 123, neg 122, neg 121, neg 120. And uh, NEG 117 is full quieting. So that proves that the receiver uh, decoupled uh, from the duplexer is working properly. Okay, now we're going to perform a third test. And this is the first of two types of desensitization tests where we check to see if the transmitter is actually interfering with the receiver in any way. Of course, the transmitter and the receiver are separated through the duplexer, this being the receiver's side and this being the transmitter side of the duplexer down here. So how we're going to do that in the first initial type of test is we're going to use the FR1600. And if we take a look at the screen, we see one side of the screen is for transmitter the other side of the screen is testing our receiver. And it's going to do this in unison all at the very same time. So when I turn up the gain to the receiver, that's going to mimic a remote uh, radio in the field keying up the receiver. And as the receiver keys up, it will also key up the transmitter. So through the magic of the IFR, the IFR is going to be able to measure our power output, frequency error, modulation type, AF gain, or deviation. It'll tell us everything about the transmitter while it's in line. Now, one thing I should point out here is that we had roughly 24 watts of power output, raw power from the transmitter when we were initially tested it. We're not going to see that same amount of output because the duplexer eats up a little bit of that power and that's called insertion loss. And the same thing happens on the receiver side as well. We had 
NIG 120 DBM, if you recall, when we turned this up to NIG 120, that's where the receiver kicked in. We're probably going to lose about one, maybe one and a half dB of loss. It's called insertion loss because the duplexer is going to eat that up. So let's start turning the gain up here on the receiver end. So here we go. It's at NIG 125 right now. NIG 122, NIG 121, NIG 120. So we have on here 17.1 watts of output. And we have uh, less than half a dB of insertion loss on the receiver side. Now we've got uh, roughly one and a half uh, dB of insertion loss on the transmitter side, which would account for um, the difference between uh, 15, 17 watts. Let's see, what have we actually got? We have 17, so we have 17.1 watts um, on a battery, I should add, that's only running at 12 volts right now. So 17 17.1 watts and uh, 24 watts, so 17, 18, 19, 20, for seven watts of uh, loss, uh, of insertion loss on the duplexer, okay? Not a big deal. That's pretty common. So the main thing we wanted to test here was desensitization. We have absolutely zero desense. If the repeater was desensing, what would happen is it would cycle on and off. What would happen is the repeater would cycle on and off. So as the receiver would kick in, it would kick in the transmitter, and then the transmitter would kick out the receiver, and then it would uh, continue that in a vicious circle. Um, and that's not happening. Uh, we have extremely good sensitivity on this receiver. We have extremely good output on the transmitter. Um, we're going to now move on to a second type of uh, desensitization test that we use. And this is called a uh, coupled uh, desensitization test. So I'll be back in the next uh, shot here. Okay, well, in this uh, test, we're going to do what's known as a coupled desensitization test uh, using a uh, decoupler. Now this, this decoupler, this is a kind of interesting device. Uh, what a decoupler is, is it's a straight through feed between the output of the antenna, output from the duplexer, of course, just to make be very clear, this is actually the output of the duplexer right here and it comes down through this coaxial cable and the coaxial cable makes its way down to the side of this pelican case. So this is where we're going to be attaching the decoupled testing device. And all this is, is it's just a uh, piece of, um, of uh, connectivity uh, that connects the inner RF connector to this dummy load through this little box here. And inside this box is a loosely coupled connection that comes off here. And it's loosely coupled at about negative 30 dBm. So look at it this way. Think of it as a wire wrapped around the actual conductor itself. But it's not physically touching the conductor. And it's measured at roughly negative 30 dBm, so it's quite well isolated from the actual component itself. What we're going to connect this to, and what this is connected to right now, is the output of the signal generator, which once again runs back to our communications setup. So <clears throat> this communication set is now going to be running on the receiver side only, and we're going to use this as a signal generator. Now, we've already established that um, the receiver kicks in at NAG 120. At least that was on our other test. We're going to test it the very same way this time. However, the only difference is that this time, instead of that 
uh, meter reading, reading negative one, negative 120, it's going to read more like about negative 90 or in around there because this accounts for 30 dB of loss in signal. So whatever this reads, we add 30 dB to that in order to know what our actual isolation is or what our uh, sensitivity is. We have a dummy load on the end of this because of course we're keying our repeater up right now, the transmitter, and the dummy load is going to absorb all of the RF energy uh, coming out of here. So we're going to start by turning our gain up now. We're at uh, neg 135, neg 121, neg 120, and it should be kicking in around neg 90 or thereabouts. So let's see what it kicks in at. So that's um, so that's exactly neg 90, and add 30 to that, and we have neg 120. And there's once again no desensitization. Okay, so we'll show you that setup again. It's just a signal. It's just we're acting as a signal generator. It comes out here, comes into our our coupler. Coupler is on dummy load. Coupler attaches in to the input of the duplexer, and this is where we're getting our readings from. So that concludes it. We've tested the transmitter. It has 24 watts of output, 17 watts of output once it bypasses through the duplexer. The receiver kicks in at negative 120 dBm. It also uh, kicks in at negative 119.9 dBm going through the duplexer. We're losing roughly 0.2 to 0.3 uh, dB of loss. Very minimal and totally acceptable. Uh, we have uh, no desensitization whatsoever. Our total sensitivity uh, coming in through here, uh, tested both ways, is uh, neg uh, 120 dBm, and we've got uh, 17.4 to 17.5 watts of RF output once it passes uh, through the output of the duplexer. All right, that's how you test uh, desense and sensitivity and the power output on a repeater.